from CT7 to CB2. The transition has not been easy and there have been a lot of changes that have been made. Firstly, everything in CT7 was provided in the core reading material and there was no need to switch between the pages to understand the thing. Whereas in CB2, you are said in the core material that you have to follow a particular book or maybe a set of books and you have to constantly switch between the pages. Also, the subject CB2 is discussed much more in detail and it requires a thorough knowledge of the subject of economics. So it is not only business economics but a pure kind of a economics in the true sense. So whereas CT7 just summarized the concepts and required that you know how to apply it, CB2 required that you know the theory as well with the applications. So an in-depth knowledge of the subject is required. So I will discuss what are the major changes that have been made in the two uh, subjects from CT7 to CB2 along with uh, the number of pages and how the uh, journey has been to be traversed. As for instance, in CT7, you have the first chapter as economic concepts, whereas in CB2, this is not much of a different from what it was in CB, uh, CT7, but again, it requires a much in-depth knowledge. So this is economic concepts as well as systems. So you have an additional systems here which will say that you study the various economic systems along with the economic concepts. Uh, the second part that we come to is the main strands of economic thinking which was completely absent and not talked about C, uh, in CT2 whereas in uh, CT7 whereas in CB2 you have something called main strands of economic thinking as an additional chapter. The third thing that we talk about is demand and supply which forms the basis of any economic theory. When it comes to demand and supply, we just had a 16 page chapter in demand and supply in CT7 which is repeated in CB2 the only difference being that everything is studied very much in detail and in depth. Uh, for instance, uh, in demand and supply you had a 16 page chapter here. Here you have demand and supply broken into two parts, supply and demand part one which replaces this also you have demand and supply or supply and demand part two in CB2 which replaces your elasticity and uncertainty. So these two chapters demand and supply and elasticity and uncertainty are replaced by supply and demand part one, supply and demand part two. But you can understand that how different they both are from each other by the number of pages. Like here you have 16 pages in demand and supply whereas supply and demand here you have 28 pages, sorry 21 pages. Elasticity and Uncertainty had 17 pages of core reading material. Demand and Supply Part 2 has 28 pages only of core reading material along with additional books that you have to follow. So you have to follow additional book in all the concepts of CB2. Whereas in CT7, you just could have done it with a brief reading of the CT7 core material. After that comes a very important chapter which is missing in CT7 which is your background to demand. This chapter is not talked about at all which forms the basis of your utility theory. So not only cardinal school of utility but also ordinal school of utility is being introduced in CB2. Not just that, we have the concept of utility, the representation of consumer preferences using the indifference curves, the rational choice. The, as the basis of the indifference curve, imperfect information, irrational behavior and other things which is not talked about in CT7. Coming to the next chapter which is your background to supply is very briefly talked about in CT7 whereas it is very uh, 
uh, it is discussed in depth in CB2. Background to supply replaces the chapter of production and costs and revenue and profit. Keep in mind that in this CB2 subject of background to supply, not only do you have the concepts of production, cost, revenue, profit, but also the short run and the long run dynamics using graphs and mathematics, calculus to come to come down to solutions of problems. So you have a hardcore calculus used here along with graphs. Talking about the next chapters, you have in CT7, perfect competition and monopoly. which is repeated in CB2. This appears in CB2 as it is. But again, there is an application of calculus here as well. Talking about the next part, imperfect competition in CT7, that's that is replaced by a monopolistic competition and oligopoly. It means the same. Nonetheless, we shouldn't forget that here in this CB2 subject, everything requires reading of additional material, not only the core material, along with solving hardcore calculus problems and being very uh, thorough with all the graphs and the dynamic movements in each of them. Then we move on to the market failure, which is being repeated here as market failure and government intervention. This does not, this chapter does not see much of a change and remains at, as it is because obviously the reasons of market failure and government intervention remains the same and nothing changes, no calculus in this part. Comes the next part is your pricing strategies. which is also kind of similar, but nonetheless much more detailed in CB2. Moving on to the next part, we have a very brief introduction of macroeconomic environment in CT7, which is only of 37 pages. Whereas talking about CB2, we have many more chapters, not just macroeconomic environment, but we have a chapter, a detailed one rather, on macroeconomic objectives as well. We also have national income accounting process and sums, which forms a part of this in CB2. Then we have money and interest rates as just a single chapter in CT7. But coming to CB2, the financial system and money has taken a forefront and we have a lot of chapters on that. Starting from the financial system, the money supply, the money market, the monetary policy, the relationship between the money market and the goods market. So you have like a hundred pages reading in CB2 for this particular topic to be covered, whereas you just had a 31 pages reading in CT7. So like 100 pages here, or maybe even more, and just 31 pages here. Coming to the next topic, we have, which is not even mentioned in CT7, there is no trace of it, but in CB2, we have 
the schools of economic thought in forms of like you have full chapters on each one of this the classical school of thought the keynesian school of thought the monetarist school of thought the new classical the austrian etc etc so no trace of it in ct7 to the next part again no mention in ct7 you have global harmonization none of which is mentioned in ct7 then finally we have a demand side policy and an exchange rate policy very briefly mentioned in ct7 whereas if you talk about cb2 you have demand side policy you have supply side policy you have exchange rate policy all covered in very much detail yahan pe they were just mentioned we hardly have uh, like we have a very short chapter in ct7 about demand side policy and exchange rate policy is just a mention in cb2 we have in detail an entire chapter on demand side policy an entire chapter on supply side policy and an entire chapter on exchange rate policy so if i just show you a screenshot of how it looks like this is the syllabus of ct7 if you can see there is no mention of the chapters that i have mentioned like the ones of keynesian school classical school monetary school and the financial system as it is the supply side policy all of which are completely ignored in ct7 but whereas when you talk about whereas when you talk about cb2 you see how we have macroeconomic objectives as a separate chapter financial system and the money supply as a separate chapter then you have the money market and the monetary policy as a separate chapter the classical and keynesian theory the monetarist and new schools and keynesian responses the relationship between the goods and the money market the supply side policy demand side policy to udhar bhi tha the exchange rate policy as a separate chapter the global harmonization and monetary unit uh, union as a separate chapter the summary of debates on theory and pal- policy as a separate chapter and not to forget the main strands of economic thinking as a separate chapter the rest of the chapter which might sim- which might sound similar or look similar by the names of it are much more covered in detail and for that you just not have to follow the core material but even in the core material they have strictly asked you to follow the books mentioned so i hope that you've understood the difference between C- cb2 and ct7 and you know that it's a huge jump which is not easy to be covered for a non economic student even for an economic student the jump is huge because you cover almost everything in a in a single paper thank you if we compare uh, two three questions repeat the question uh, if we compare the eco on syllabus with the cb2 syllabus how do you make it if we compare the economics on our syllabus with the cb2 syllabus as per your question i would just show you one thing so economics honors just yeah so in economics honors uh, the all the concepts of microeconomics that you go through over the 3 years macroeconomics and an additional uh, finance which is financial economics is covered so whatever you go through in these three subjects at least is covered in this single paper so whatever you learn in three years in microeconomics macroeconomics financial economics everything summed up in this one paper uh, if i compare ct7 syllabus with the uh, economics honor syllabus i would just say that uh, it is a basic i think only a first year syllabus of economics honors whereas this encapsulates all these three of the three years and uh, any good sign where you know city seven 
Um, there are, as I said, uh, his question is if there is something which is common to both, right? Covered in CT7 but not removed in CT7. Okay, CT7. something which is uh, covered in CT7 but not included in CT, uh, CB2. So, if you see the CT7 syllabus, there is everything, everything which is covered in CB2 but in much more detail with addition to new chapters. So, there is nothing at all which is there in CT7 but not there in CB2. Everything is there with new additions, of course.